this is the beginnings of my the top half of my sister's head. I pin the back with darts and then I mark the foam with Sharpie pen. Take out the pins and I know where the darts are. When you take the pins out, you can see exactly where the darts are to cut. This could actually then be used as a template for the back of the head. Here's the beginning of my sister's head. I look like a robot. I am related to Dr. Spock. Okay, so today's a day when I cover the top of my sister's head. That's the back front. These are her cheeks. And I roll my fabric out, inside, out. And I put her head in the middle of it. I'm gonna pin around the head, making sort of a template. I think for her head, it might be best to disguise seams along the side where her hair and ears will cover most of everything. So, let me try to pin that on and we'll come back. It's kind of tough to get it going at first, so I pinned along the edge of the fabric and I stuffed her head in there, sort of like a mitten, so I could feel where to at least start the seam and then I'll pin the fabric here so it's still and then start pinning, or pinning around the edge. Okay, so I've basically pinned around the perimeter. Pinned around the perimeter, that's the front, and I'll start pinning around the front facial feature. Okay, so the back of my sister's head was pretty smooth and I don't need to pin anything other than around the perimeter. But on the front side I have these cheeks to contend with. So I'm gonna have to take some type of dart or seam because the fabric will not lay flat over it. So I simply try to take the seams where the natural folds and lines appear on her face and that way if I have to see something it's going to look a little bit more natural and obviously if you were going to dart this on each side that would make the cheek stand out but her cheek doesn't stand out like a pure circle when the fabric is a little bit forgiving and stretches over it it almost looks more natural notice I've left Here's the end of the foam head and I've left like another nine inches or so, whatever the fabric will allow. Beyond that, because this is going to be the sock that covers my arm in the back of the head. Okay, so I cut all the excess fabric and the head is foam and should be able to pull out of here. So I can sew. Okay, I've sewed all my seams and I go back and cut off the excess fabric. Straighten it out and see how it fits. The head, the, the sock that fits over the head fits well. So I went ahead and cut a across the front so I can tuck this under the front edge and insert this will be glued around here and the back will be will hide my hand as it comes into the mouth okay and now I'm done I use the hot glue gun to glue the fleece to the back side of the foam of the head the rest of the fabric in the head is not glued on. It's, if you want to call it free floating inside of there, it's just stretched tight over it, that's all. Um, if you really want to draw attention to the features, you can use that spray contact cement on the back side of the fleece and the front side of the foam so that it sticks tightly around the bone structure that you've created, but in this case I didn't want that. So I'm ready to insert my mouth. Here's the beginning of my head and once you glue all the seams together you may find like that 
it gets a little pointy with the glue sticking out or you just don't like the finish, remember that you can turn the whole thing inside out like a, like a piece you sewed and it might look cleaner on the inside. Okay, my head needs to be taller so I have to give myself a lobotomy, cut the top of my skull off, get in there and put more in it. <laughs> I wish it were that easy in life. <laughs>